We are all excited to know what season 5 of Emily in Paris will bring us. Meanwhile, let's check out some phrases from season 4. What team are you on? Team Gabriel, Alfie or Marcello? Number 1. To give a shot. Uh, can you get us some drinks? Yeah. Do not call him my boyfriend again. He told me he's moving here and he wants to give us a shot. And that's bad? <laughs> he's gorgeous. We're not sure about the exact origin of the phrase, but shot likely refers to some kind of sport, like archery, when a shot means an attempt or a try. To give something a shot means to give that something a chance or some effort. For example, you have never skied before, but you decide to give skiing a shot. You decide to try skiing anyway. Julian and Mindy are talking about Julian's new love interest. And he says that the guy wants to give them a shot, meaning he wants to give them a try as a couple and see if things go well. To give something a shot. I don't know anything about fixing computers, but I will give it a shot. He gave the auditions a shot, but ultimately failed. We have been giving that online course a shot for the past two weeks. Shot. Shot. Give us. Give us. Give us a shot. He wants to. He wants to give us a shot. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number two, clean slate. Oh, good to see you. It's been a while. How are you? I'm good. I mean, after everything that happened, I didn't think I would be. I took some time for myself. Got a clean slate. And I think I'm finally starting to fall in love with Paris. Slate is a type of board for writing in the past. After erasing the writing from the slate, it would be clean and ready to start over again. The phrase clean slate means fresh start without any past mistakes or problems. After some rough time, Alfie says he took some time to himself and now is starting with a clean slate. So he is starting his new chapter of his life in Paris and is now starting to like it. After the argument, they decided to forgive each other and start with a clean slate. After his bad performance last season, the coach gave him a clean slate to prove himself again. The new CEO promised the company would start with a clean slate and fix its past mistakes. Clean slate. Clean slate. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number three, to loosen up. Uh-huh. Prêt? Uh-huh. Merci à vous. Okay, bye. Well, well, well. Someone's star meter is on the rise. Mm -hmm. That was crazy horse. They're looking for a new singer for their Friday Night Review. Oh, but aren't all their performers topless? Yeah, I know. I know. But this is Paris. I, I gotta loosen up, right? If something is loose, it isn't tight and doesn't hold itself well. For example, this is a tight t-shirt and this is a loose one. Or think about loose shoelaces. To loosen up means to become more relaxed and it can refer to physically relaxing or to acting more comfortable and less seriously. Mindy just got a new job at a provocative bar where people perform topless. That's not something she is used to but she says that it's Paris so she can loosen up so she could get more comfortable and relaxed about things like that and be less serious. He always loosens up after a few minutes of dancing. Before giving his speech, he loosened up by taking a few deep breaths. They have loosened up a lot since moving to the countryside. Loosen. Loosen. Loosen up. Loosen up. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number four, suit yourself. I left him on the slopes. And really ended things? Yes. I mean, the three of us like that, it was not sustainable. But I really need to talk to him because I hate how we left things. Well, maybe you just skip the talk and hit him up with the... <laughs> I think I'll stick with talk. Suit yourself. To say suit yourself means the same as do as you want. The intonation can change the meaning slightly. For example, you can say suit yourself and that can mean just make your own decision. But this phrase can also be used when the listener disagrees with the opinion but gives up and doesn't want to persuade you otherwise. For example, Thank you for all of your advice, but I think I'll still do it my way. Okay, suit yourself. Mindy jokingly suggests that Emily should skip talking to Gabriel and just start flirting with him instead. However, Emily says that she needs to talk. So Mindy says, suit yourself, 
meaning do as you want. If you don't want to come with us, suit yourself. I tried to warn him, but he just said, suit yourself and walked away. She didn't agree with his decision, but eventually said, suit yourself and stopped arguing. Yourself. Yourself. Suit. Suit. Suit yourself. Suit yourself. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number five, to shadow someone. You'll learn a lot. I'm so worried I'm gonna mess up. I just don't want to disappoint Sylvie or my dad. No, you'll be great, okay? Just shadow me for a week or so and you'll get the hang of everything. I'm here for you, New York. You can ask me anything. Think of a shadow. It is always right next to you and follows you everywhere you go. To shadow someone means to follow that person closely to observe and learn from them, often in a work or educational setting. Emily is having lunch with Genevieve, who is new to the company. Emily tells Genevieve to shadow her for a week, meaning to follow her and observe her at work to understand how things work. As part of the training program, the new hires will shadow a more experienced employee for the first two weeks. She shadowed the doctor during his hospital rounds to learn more about patient care. Before starting his own project, he had shadowed a colleague to understand the workflow. A week. A week. Shadow me. Shadow me for a week. Just shadow me for a week. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number six, nothing beats. Oh, are you the office barista now? The Bavazza people are coming in today and sent us their coffee to try. Nothing beats an Italian espresso. The verb to beat means to defeat or surpass something in a competition or comparison. So the phrase nothing beats means that nothing is better than something. For example, nothing beats a burger when you are hungry. If you say that, that means that you think burger is number one and no other food can be better. Luke says that nothing beats an Italian espresso, meaning in terms of coffee, Italian espresso is the best. This movie is good, but nothing beats the original version. Nothing beats a cup of coffee in the morning to wake me up. We tried many solutions, but nothing beats teamwork when solving a tough problem. Nothing beats. Nothing beats. Italian espresso. Italian espresso. Nothing beats an Italian espresso. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number seven, to overstay welcome. I think she's mad at me. Oh, that's just Sylvie. You'll get used to it. No, I've been staying at her place and my dad's not even there. He's in Saint-Tropez. I think I've overstayed my welcome. Mm. The phrase to overstay welcome comes from the idea of staying longer than is considered polite or expected, whether at a social event or in someone's home. For example, someone invites you to their home for two days, but you decide to stay for a few extra days and see that the host is now uncomfortable or unhappy. You have overstayed your welcome. Genevieve doesn't have her own place, so she's staying at Sylvie's at the moment. And now she's concerned that Sylvie is being cold with her because she has overstayed her welcome. So she thinks that Sylvie is not happy with Genevieve being at her home anymore. To overstay someone's welcome. So please make sure to match that someone's to the subject of the sentence. So the person that is staying. After the party, he stayed late and quickly realized he had overstayed his welcome. You should leave before you overstay your welcome. The guests overstayed their welcome and the hosts were getting impatient. Overstate. Overstate my welcome. I think I've overstayed my welcome. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number eight, to run something by someone. Oh, Jen, I really wish you'd run that by me before mentioning it. I, I know, it just slipped out. Should I go tell them to forget it? The phrase run something by someone originates from the idea of quickly presenting or reviewing something with another person to get their opinion or approval. For example, before finalizing the project, you are running to your boss to check it. So you are running the project by your boss. You want to get feedback or approval. Genevieve mentioned an idea during a meeting without telling Emily. So Emily says that she wishes Genevieve had run the idea by her before, meaning that Genevieve should have talked to Emily and let her check the idea beforehand. I always run my ideas by my boss before starting a new project. 
I have been running the draft by my editor for the past hour. Next week, I'll be running the strategy by our investors for their input. Run that by me. Run that by me before. I wish you'd run that by me before. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. And finally, number nine, to slip out. I really wish you'd run that by me before mentioning it. I, I know, it just slipped out. Should I go tell them to forget it? No, it wasn't a bad idea. I just, I can't have you preemptively pitching brands for my client. The phrase slip out comes from the idea of something happening smoothly and almost unnoticed, much like an object slipping out of your hand, for example, a slippery butter. It describes not only physical movements, but also words or actions that happen quietly, quickly or unintentionally. If something slipped out of your mouth, it means you said something accidentally, unintentionally. Genevieve says that the idea proposal slipped out during the meeting. She didn't plan to say it, but it just happened accidentally. Sometimes when he's nervous, things just slip out and he says things he doesn't mean. I didn't mean to tell him about the surprise party, it just slipped out. The truth about their engagement slipped out during the family dinner. Slipped out. Slipped out. It just slipped out. It just slipped out. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Okay, and now it is time for you to do some exercises and check how well you understood the material. And remember, if you need extra time, you can always pause the video. Exercise number one. Choose the correct phrase to complete the sentence. Exercise number two, rearrange the words to form a correct sentence.
Thanks for watching till the end of the lesson. Even if sometimes learning English can get hard and you feel like getting a clean slate, give it another shot. Nothing beats like a nice treat after hard work, so go and reward yourself. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a fun and quick English lesson with PDQ English.